the wise Buddha said, all of life is suffering. And the only possible way to let go of suffering and to step into joy is to let go of our personal self, is to let go of wanting things, is to let go of resisting other things. I'm pissed. I'm really fucking pissed. <sighs> and at the same time, it's just funny. Oh, yesterday I recorded one of my favorite videos for you. It was such a beautiful flow, like bam, 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 bam. I was so happy this morning. I got up, started editing, and then I stopped because we needed to move to a different place. And then I wanted to continue edit, but in the meantime, I sold my old camera to a dude and uh, we fumbled around with the camera and with the SD card. And long story short, I formatted the memory card and I tried to recover it with a recovering tool, but it was not successful. So all the beautiful footage of yesterday is gone. Can you believe it? I hate, I hate moments like this. I know that's not the first time that this happened to me. And I still hate it. When there was this like beautiful thing where I like, ah, ah, I was so excited to show all that to you. And of course you cannot recreate that. And <laughs> this, that this happened perfectly connects to the topic of the video that I recorded for you yesterday. And this was living from a place of surrender. Surrendering to the greater forces, giving up control, letting go of your ego desires, letting go of your resistances towards things that you don't want to be there in your life and just accept. Come into full acceptance and peace with everything that is. And yeah, that's my invitation right now. Thank you, fucking universe. <laughs> oh. Since the things that we talked about yesterday were not only from a content perspective, but from a sharing and behind the scenes and what is going on right now in, the, in our process of this project that we are trying to bring into life custodia a new paradigm living space like so many of the things that i shared yesterday are incredibly valuable and i don't want to just like move on and focus on today and the next topic i want to share all that with you and although i'm not able to make that accessible for you in this typical cinematic beautifully well edited with music and with like f documenting a whole day kind of way i just want to share that with you today we're gonna just talk let's go everything began with a message from my lawyer and little backstory if you um didn't watch the past episodes we found our favorite piece of land and we already um settled on a on a on a price with the current owner and the only thing left was the paperwork and then after a long process, the lawyer texted me back. Hello, we just got the final answer from our land department. The land is situated in the green belt and sustainable agriculture area. Therefore, the land can be built, can't, can't be built upon. And this is due to some recent changes that not even the current owner was aware of. He thought, okay, yeah, yeah. When are you ready? Let's do this. And it's not possible. We cannot build anything there. Besides planting coffee <laughs> or papayas, nothing else is possible on this land. Which is very unfortunate. And of course, this too, when I received this message, evoked a reaction inside myself of like, fuck, I was like so happy with this land. We already felt like so much at home. Seeing Leo there, he was like, ah, oh, it was just a joy. Directly facing the mountains and the forest and having 
like so much privacy being fully nestled in beautifully untouched nature and still like a couple of minutes by scooter to the local village and like everything aligned perfectly over the past months and now this perfect alignment stopped or so my ego thought but what if this is part of the perfect alignment and this is the perspective I'm able to take when I remind myself of how important it is to live from a place of surrender, as Michael Singer puts it in his book, The Surrender Experiment, one of my favorite books. And the subtitle of this book, A Journey into Life's Perfection, describes it beautifully. Who am I to tell that this is wrong or this is right? Me with my little tiny brain compared to the infinite, infinitely more powerful sum of all the forces on this planet and the sum of all the forces in this galaxy. Like 8 billion people and all the history and all the plants and all the other planets and sun and the moon and like everything. Like the, the combined wisdom and forces, like this represents how am I, like how dare I to say that whatever happened, whatever it is, like be it that it's not possible to build on our favorite piece of land or that it's raining tomorrow or that what whatever it is on this planet in this reality like that anything of that is wrong who am i to tell like i'm just a tiny speck in this universe and the combined forces are so much more wise than me so it's just my invitation to accept accept and be with what every what, what whatever is there right now so after a period of resistance and of ah i said okay let's move on something else will materialize whatever that might be and then yesterday uh, we visited our friends at nadi um nadi is a beautiful little eco resort with a nature cafe and permaculture farm and they built this beautiful place they opened last year and we got friends with them and we shared like what happened that our favorite piece of land is not accessible anymore and then i was talking with uh, with puni the owner and then his wife um came across he overheard our conversation and she said wait a second i just overheard what you were talking about 10 minutes earlier one of our staff members told me that uh that her father actually decided to sell a land not far from here with a beautiful mountain view too maybe this is the place that calls you i can get you into contact with him and i was like hmm interesting <laughs> in moments like these that's not the first time i remind myself of living from a place of, of living from a place of surrender and mo when moments like these happen i'm always like oh interesting what will come next <laughs> almost like i see my life through the lens of being in a cinema and watching a movie like this perspective is really powerful and then i was like oh yeah sure thank you <laughs> tomorrow we will have a conversation with him and we will see the land let's see what might emerge <laughs> over there and then the second topic i, I shared with uh, we shared with them was like um i over the past months and like year or two i i dove into like sustainable agriculture uh, sustainable architecture and how to uh, how do i envision this place and in, inside my head it's like very clear and still there are many topics where i'm very far from being an, being an expert on like how to create the actual site map with water and electricity and where to put the composting toilets and how to create this like flow like perfect flow within this ecosystem and i was like okay i will educate myself up until up uh, up to a point so that I'm able to have a like, good conversation with an expert that I hire, like an architect, um, who um, takes care of that. And I asked them which architect they worked with and they, whether they could recommend them. And they said, like, yeah, we worked actually with two architects, but in the end, we did it by ourselves because it didn't fully click. And then they said, like, okay, let's just, let's just do it by ourselves. And I was like, wow, you, this, was, this is your first project and this is not like... This is not like just a little hut and whatever. It's a beautiful area. It's like with such a level of care and attention to detail. It's incredible. I love it there. And they said, 
Actually, yeah, we did it by ourselves and we just implemented the principles of permaculture. Permaculture is a, uh, is a topic that fascinates me since I first got into contact uh, with that almost three years ago when we spent some, t some time in Costa Rica with Stephen Brooks and Momentum Collective and we learned about the permaculture principles. And then she said, uh, actually, um, you want to learn more about permaculture? And I was like, yes, of course, I already uh, dove into it, but I don't feel qualified right now to create the actual site plan of, <laughs> of Custodia just by myself. And she said, it's interesting because yesterday... <laughs> Yesterday, I thought, I, I said to myself, actually, we got two copies of Bill Mollison's Permaculture Bible, because they bought two, like for each one of them, um, when they planned their site. But in the end, they just worked with one of them and the other one like, just lay around. And yesterday, she, she said to herself, actually, I, I want to sell that. It's just like collecting dust here. And I was like, oh, interesting. That's a book that for a long, long time now, I wanted to get my hands on. And it's very difficult because it's not in print anymore. It was written in the 70s. The author is is uh, no longer with us, unfortunately. And I even thought about getting it from Germany, like in a, in a secondhand version. But even that is very difficult and very pricey. A couple of hundred bucks, like really, really important for a book. And then she said, actually, I have a second one here. Do you want to buy it? I can give it to you. <laughs> and I was like, yes, please. And now I have... I, I, now I'm a pro proud owner of uh, Bill Mollison's permaculture, permaculture Designer's Manual. So, probably I will do that by myself. <laughs> and this feels very daunting. But there was another sign from the universe where the path is, is leading. And maybe it's totally right that it, will, that it will take a little bit longer to find the place so that I have the time to educate myself properly in order to acquire the skills, in order to be able to do that by myself, instead of hiring an expert and spending a lot of money there and instead deepening my own connection with the land and deepening my own connection with the elements and implementing what I've already learned and I, what I will learn over the past, uh, over the next couple of weeks while diving into this hugely fascinating topic. I can, like, I will share, I will share a lot. And yeah, then we went home and I was like, Thank you, universe, for laying out the next step so beautifully in front of me. And while my first reaction was a lot of resistance when I heard that our favorite piece of land is not accessible anymore, now I feel at peace. And there was a process. And I went through this process many, 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 many times already over the past couple of years. And now it's getting more and more... I would say it feels more and more natural. And still, in moments like this morning, when I erase this fucking SD card and I'm no longer able to make this beautifully short movie that we created yesterday accessible for you and instead only be able to talk, it's part of the process and I cannot change anything. If I cannot change anything, like, it's the most stupid thing I can do to still be in resistance because I cannot change it. If you cannot change that it's raining, oh yes, I sh sure, I get it. You wanted to make a picnic and it's raining and you hate that and you cannot make your picnic, but it's raining anyway. So why bother? <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Mr. Singer. I can highly recommend you to dive into. The Surrender Experiment is one of my favorite books. It tells the story of a man who just wanted to walk his spiritual path and wanted to build a little hut just for himself in the middle of the woods and meditate all day and be left alone. And then in the end, <laughs> as it turned out, he manifested an incredibly rich and powerful spiritual community. He built a temple there and people from all over the world are coming to him. He's inviting spiritual teachers like really famous ones from India and so on and organizing retreats there and as a side effect, he even built a billion dollar company tech, billion dollar tech company in the real physical world. And all that was not planned by him. All that was not a product of his conscious effort or his goal setting. All that was just 
a product of surrender. And there were many, many, many situations in his life where he was like, I just want to sit alone in the woods and meditate. But life offers me this job opportunity that I don't want to take. But after a while, he he realized that it's not his task to stand in the way. And it's, it's his task to surrender to whatever presents in front of him so he said yes to this job opportunity even though he didn't want to take it and through this job opportunity he met with the right person um, that set him into contact with another person and then this manifested and then this and this and in the end like he lived the most beautiful life ever <laughs> and moments like these where I'm pissed where I'm in resistance where I'm angry where I'm like ah oh, are always a beautiful reminder to let go because who am I to judge whatever is right and whatever is wrong so yeah as the wise Buddha said all of life is suffering and why is all of life suffering because we cling and we resist we cling to the things that we want and we resist the things that we don't want and as long as there is just a single piece that we want and that is not present or a single piece that we don't want and that is present we suffer because the reality is not fully as we want it to be and since the chances are so tiny that everything that we want is there and nothing that we don't want is there nothing that we don't want is not there we are suffering <laughs> so all of life is suffering and the only possible way to let go of suffering and to step into joy and, and perfection and ecstasy and bliss is to let go of our personal self, is, is to let go of wanting things, is to let go of resisting other things. And that's a path of a lifetime. And I will be sure, surely honored for the next years and decades. And every time I walk through this cycle, it's getting easier and easier and easier. So yeah, this is the message of today. <laughs> Living from a place of surrender. And yeah, the, uh, I, like even though I know this and I create content about it, there's still this voice inside my head that tells me like, oh my God, this is already episode 19, 19. And then episode one, I said, we are going to build Custodia, a new paradigm living space. And we already found our favorite piece of land. And da, 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 And now it's at a, it's almost a month later. It's episode 19. And the land is not there yet. And we don't know where the land will be. So it seems like I made a couple of steps like in the wrong direction. And there's another voice, voice inside myself that tells me, no, 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 no. That's part of the plan. Relax, relax, surrender, and just continue. Continue on this journey and let yourself be surprised by what will come next. And that's what I'm gonna do, even though if it's not, even though it's not easy, and even though there's a part inside myself that tells me it would have been so beautifully if the lawyer would have said everything is in perfect order. Let's do an appointment next week. We can meet here and we can sign the papers, and then you can start manifesting this beautiful place. That would have been so nice, but it's not the case. And so I accept it. Thank you, universe. <laughs>